The more time you spend in the cryptocurrency space, the more wallets, seed phrases, and passphrases you tend to accumulate. Securely managing all those seed phrases and associated passphrases can become confusing and overwhelming. This leads people to take shortcuts, like sticky notes, screenshots, or even photos of their seed phrases. Those shortcuts can have devastating financial consequences, putting your precious Bitcoin and crypto at risk of total loss. But there's simply no way to manage all those seed phrases and passphrases offline in a secure, organized fashion. Or is there? What if I told you I could help you organize all of your crypto wallets and seed phrases using a single master seed phrase? You'd probably subscribe to my channel, leave a really nice comment about how smart and handsome I am, and hit that thumbs up button. Well, I'm gonna hold you to it because in today's video, I'm gonna give you a five-step system that you can use to organize all your crypto wallets and seed phrases in a safe and secure manner. Let's dive in. So step one, get some crypto. You can use a centralized exchange like Coinbase or Gemini, or you can use a decentralized exchange like Uniswap or even Jupiter. Just find a way to turn that dirty fiat into precious Bitcoin and crypto. Step two, temporarily consolidate all your holdings into a single wallet. That could be an exchange wallet or on an exchange or in a self-custody wallet that could be a hot wallet or even a cold wallet like a Trezor or a Ledger. I recently did a video on the Trezor Save 3 right here. Once all your crypto is consolidated into a single wallet, you can move on to step three. The third step is to generate your master seed phrase and passphrase. Now, a passphrase is optional. It's an extra word or a 13th or a 25th word that you add to your seed phrase that you make up yourself. I would highly recommend that you use a passphrase. And then what you do is you store the passphrase separate from your seed phrase. That way, if your seed phrase ever gets compromised, you're good. They don't have access to your crypto. Now, you could use a hardware wallet to generate a master seed phrase for you using the secure chip inside the hardware wallet, but you're going to need to enter that master seed phrase into the computer at some point in order to follow these steps. If that's simply too risky for you, then just leave things the way they are. But if you're still tracking, Let's take a look at that process using a seed phrase generator that I found online. Now, before we go there, if you suspect that you might have malware on your computer, do not do this on your computer. Use a trusted computer or make sure that your computer is perfectly clean. That is, it's a new computer. Well, although some new computers are actually coming with infected malware on them, it's a feature, not a bug. You can always factory reset your computer, wipe the hard drive, start over if you really want to be secure before you do this. Let's go ahead and take a look at that C generator. Here is the One Key, which is a hardware wallet maker, which I did a review on the One Key Classic in an earlier video. Here we're looking at the One Key Recovery Phrase Generator. Now, before we do anything with regard to generating a master seed phrase, we're going to need to make sure that we're secure. Right now, I'm running this seed phrase generator online and it is not secure. So if I generate a seed phrase, boom, insecure. All the crypto I put in that wallet is gone. So what we need to do is we need to save the page, download it, and then run it locally on our machine. It will still run in the browser, but the address is completely different. So right now, the address is bip39.onekey.so forward slash index.html. I'll leave a link down below, of course. But if you go to the file menu and then press save page as you can see that right here it will download the page and save it to whatever file you want to one key bip 39 recovery phrase i'm going to save it to the desktop and what it does is it saves a folder which is the resources for the index page but then outside the folder there's a file right here one key bip 39 recovery phrase dot html i'm not sure what it says if you double click that it's exactly the same thing but if you look at the address bar, the address has changed completely. Now we're running the file locally. If you want to, you can turn off your Wi-Fi to be extra secure, but the page is running locally using JavaScript in your browser and theoretically not sending any data back to anybody else somewhere in China or someplace like that. For demonstration purposes, I'm gonna leave the Wi-Fi on, but you don't have to do that uh, in your own case. All right, 
let's generate that master seed phrase. So we want 12 words. You can use 24 words if you prefer. I'm going to use 12. We're going to show BIP 85. It's not important at the moment, but I just want to turn that on. Make sure that we are offline. Yes, we're using the offline version. And we're going to click generate. Pretty simple. <laughs> And that's it. This is my master seed phrase. That was not very ceremonial, but that's about it. What we also want to do here is generate, or excuse me, create a passphrase that we add to our seed phrase as the extra or 13th word in this case. So we're going to scroll down and we're going to type in a passphrase here. Now, how do I come up with a passphrase? Well, you can use a password generator online. You can use just make up a sentence. You can use a jumble of numbers and letters, whatever you prefer. Just make sure that it's strong and can't be guessed. In order to do that, you can check the security of your password or the power of your password or passphrase. It's not really a password. On this site here, this is how secure is my password at security.org forward slash how secure is my password. So you can enter your password in here. I'm going to type in a really difficult password, P A S S. W-O-R-D. Oh, it wouldn't take long for a computer to break that password. So that is not the best one to use for a passphrase. This one does not generate passphrases, but you can certainly test the strength of your passphrase in this box right here. Let's go ahead and look at another site called usedapassphrase.com. Very creative name. And this site will generate a really complex random passphrase for you using a series of words. Now you can add words, you can take away words, you can change the capitalization, you can add a number, you can add symbols if you prefer. The passphrase is not limited to any of these things. In other words, for a passphrase on your associated with your crypto master seed phrase, you can use characters, you can use numbers, you can use capital letters, small letters, and and special characters like parentheses, stars, ampersand, those things like that. So this one would be cracked. Proxima crack time is 432 big number centuries. A long time. And we can even make it more difficult if we generate, continue to generate them. And you can see, oh, here we go. Now that is a secure passphrase. So I'm going to copy that and go back to our one key recovery phrase converter and enter it into the passphrase box. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but this is the key, the master key that is created using this seed phrase. So the seed phrase is run through some special algorithm in the software behind the scenes, and it creates this master key that is used to derive everything else in the wallet, all the addresses, all the accounts, everything. This is the real deal right here, the bottom line. Now watch what happens when I take a simple one character out of the passphrase. Boop. Oh my goodness. Did you watch down here? Let me do that again. I'll put that character back and watch right down here at the root key. It changed. Every single character you change or add or take away in the passphrase gives you an entirely different account, if you will. It changes the master key or the root key completely. So you cannot change this, but make sure that you keep this passphrase secure and separate from your seed phrase. Okay, if, if someone gets this, the seed phrase and your passphrase, you are SOL. So that's not good. All right, now that we've created our master seed phrase and our passphrase, let's go ahead and move on to the next step, step four. Step four is the biggest step in this whole five-step system, and it's about picking the child system that you're going to use to create your wallets. And I'll explain that. There are three systems you can use to organize your crypto life, and they're each inspired by a different Bitcoin improvement proposal. That's a big word. But those are all of the list of various improvements that have been adopted by Bitcoin developers over the years since Bitcoin was released in 2009. And they are proposed to the group of developers by a developer, and then the other developers implement those changes and they come up with a improvement proposal that is approved and implemented and then sent out to everybody that needs to know the nodes and the miners. Because each of the systems is inspired by a different Bitcoin improvement proposal, I'm going to refer to them as such. I'll explain each one of them and then demonstrate how it works. I'll also explain what you need to keep track of if you use that particular system and what the risks are in using that system at the very end. Oh, at the very end, 
I'm also going to make my personal recommendation with regard to what system I'm using in my crypto organization system. System one, BIP85. All right, the first system is inspired by BIP85, duh, which allows for the creation of an unlimited number of child seed phrases underneath a single master seed phrase. So you have the master seed phrase, which we just created, and underneath that, you can create literally an unlimited number of child seed phrases to use for various wallets. That way you keep all your child seeds sort of underneath or nested underneath your master seed phrase. And believe it or not, I've done a video on this exact topic, BIP85, and you can find the link right here. I'll also leave it down below. For now, let's take a look at our seed generator again and see how this child seed system works. Now keep in mind, there is no limit to the number of child seeds you can create underneath your master seed phrase. But all of the seed generators that I've tried do have a hard limit set to them. And that limit is 2,147,483,647. I <laughs> think... I know that's a ridiculous number, but that's the last child seed you can create underneath the master seed. And I tried multiple seed phrase generators. It's just something to do with the software that the seed phrase generators have used across them. Okay, here we are back at the recovery phrase converter, the one key recovery phrase converter. Make sure we're running this offline. We are. And we scroll down. Remember I clicked this little button, show BIP85. Now it makes sense, right? Because we want to develop child seeds underneath our master seed. So this is the BIP85 section. And you can see it says right here and here. So what we want to do, the most important things are the index and then of course the child seed. You can change the index. And this is the area that has the limited number of child seeds that you can create, at least in the software. But theoretically, Bitcoin and crypto do not have a limit on the number of child seeds you can create under a parent seed. So we can change this index number to whatever number we want and the child seed the appropriate child seed is created for that index this does not change in other words it's deterministic that is every time you hit this index number 25 underneath this seed phrase along with this passphrase you will always get this child seed phrase you do not need to keep track of this this is what you need to keep track of. In other words, of course you need to put your master seed phrase offline on hardware or something like that, piece of metal. I recently did a video on the one key seed storage system and I'll leave the thumbnail right here and I'll put a link to it down below. That's a good storage system, but as long as you keep it offline, do not keep it on paper, please. Do not put it on a sticky note. Do not put it in a place where you'll forget it. Put it on metal and keep it in a safe place. Some people even do multiple copies. So every time you enter this seed phrase and this passphrase and index number 25, you're going to get this seed phrase. So you do not need to keep track of that. Now, what you do need to keep track of for this system the BIP85 wallet organization system number one is all the index numbers you use to generate different seed phrases and the wallet they're associated with. And if you want to use a passphrase associated with this particular seed phrase, you can certainly do that. And what you would do if you wanted to create uh, another level of the tree is you, you simply take this seed phrase, copy it, and paste it up here into the main window right in here. And then that would become the master phrase for whatever work you wanted to do. You can create seed phrases under that and then under that if you want to, but it gets really complicated. The things you would need to keep track of for this first system, the BIP85 wallet system or seed phrase organization system are, and we can I made a spreadsheet for you. This is the BIP85 wallet list. You would need index numbers for each wallet. You would need the wallet name and the passphrase if you used one for that wallet. Now, if somebody found this wallet list, they can't do anything with it. They don't have the master seed phrase and they don't have the master passphrase. So you're good. Now, I would still store this securely and I wouldn't put it out in public like I'm doing right now. You shouldn't fret too much that you're going to expose yourself. I'll go through all the exposure risks at the end of the video. You can see here, the index numbers seem to be wildly different. I did that on purpose because I wanted to use a random number for the various index numbers to just increase the level of security a little bit. I'm not sure if that actually does anything. 
rather than using index number zero for this wallet, index number one, index number two, three, etc. But if I were a bad guy, those are the first indexes that I would search crypto for. Now, am I going to spend the time it takes to get to index number 2,600,023? I don't know. I don't know if a computer can do that really quickly or if it has to be done manually. But if you want to use random index numbers, you can use a random number generator at randomnumbergenerator.org. And I have one right here. You can see I have pick one number from zero to two billion one four hundred forty seven million blah, blah, blah. So let's go ahead and start. We let it go and stop. That is how I came up with this list of numbers. So that's another way to potentially add a little bit uh, of security to your whole system. And again, next wallet, boom. Until you come up with the list of indexes you're going to use and the wallets you're assigning them to and the passphrases you use for those particular wallets. All right, let's go ahead and look at the second system we can use to organize our crypto life. System number two is called BIP44. Obviously, it's inspired by Bitcoin improvement proposal number 44, which allows for the creation of an unlimited number of child accounts underneath a master seed phrase. Not child seed phrases, child accounts. Unfortunately, unlike the first system we discussed, none of these accounts can have a passphrase associated with them. So there is a little bit of security vulnerability associated with this second option. Also, in doing the research for this video, I was only able to restore a single chain Bitcoin wallet with this system. The key generators I've used only provide a BIP32 extended private key. And not all software can derive keys for other chains using the BIP32 extended private key. The child accounts generated by the software are specifically designed for Bitcoin accounts and the Bitcoin blockchain. I was able to generate private keys for other cryptocurrencies like Ethereum, but only a single address at a time. So it's not really very functional. Although I did read that the Ledger Live and the Trezor Suite software do have the capability of importing a BIP32 extended private key and then deriving keys for multiple other chains. But I wasn't able to confirm that. Let's head over to the C generator again and take a look. Here we are back at the recovery phrase converter. And of course, we have our master seed phrase here and our passphrase. And in this case, we don't want to be using this. We're going to go down farther to, you guessed it, BIP44. And this is where the accounts come into play. It's very similar to the seed phrase up here where we have an index number. Well, there are account numbers. And again, you have an unlimited number of accounts, of course, for some reason, the software has this hard limit set at over 2 billion. But if you have 2 billion wallets, <laughs> you've got bigger problems. All right, so let's, again, let's take one of our random numbers and we're going to copy it. We're going to go down here and paste it. And now we've got the private key associated with that account right here. This private key here can be used to restore a Bitcoin wallet. And this private key can be used to restore a Bitcoin wallet. Apparently, either one is good. This account private key is, I believe, used to derive this extended private key right here. And this extended private key is then used to derive the private keys that are associated with the addresses that are generated for this account. So let's go ahead and change the account number right here and see what happens to all of these other things. So we're going to look at the private key ends in UW, the BIP extended private key ends in QOS, and 1EH. All right, so we're going to just, let's just delete some of these. Boom. And the private key is different, the extended private key is different, and the address is different. So this is another way that you could potentially organize your Bitcoin accounts, at least. You can create these accounts using different cryptocurrencies right here using this button. Obviously, there is a really large selection, most of which I've never heard of. So we've got Omnicore Deep Onion. So if you're a big Deep Onion fan, you're in luck. But there are some more popular ones like Ethereum. When I changed the cryptocurrency, nothing else changed. The passphrase did not change, the seed phrase did not change, and the BIP32 root key did not change. But 
this changed and these changed down here as well. This didn't change, but if we change this again, we have these master keys, but these are good to restore, not the public one, but these are good to restore Bitcoin accounts, not Ethereum accounts. So I just don't understand how that works. If you know how to do this and get Ethereum accounts restored, let me know in the comments below. So what do you have to keep track if you use this system, at least for your Bitcoin? Let's go ahead and look at this BIP44 tab. And wow, is that simple. So you've got your master seed, check. You've got your passphrase, check. Then you've got your list of wallets and the associated account numbers. Again, I used random numbers here and the various wallets that I might have. And that's it. This would be your entire system that you would need to track besides your master seed and the passphrase. And that's it. That's really, really simple, particularly if you're a Bitcoin maxi. Let's go ahead and look at the third option. System three is called BIP39. And you guessed it. It was inspired by the Bitcoin Improvement Proposal number 39, which defines the standard for creating deterministic wallets using mnemonic seed phrases. This BIP was later extended with the introduction of adding an additional word or passphrase to the seed phrase. And again, unlike the seed phrase, passphrases are not limited to a 2048 word list. It can be a combination of uppercase, lowercase, numbers, spaces, or special characters. And an unlimited number of passphrases can be created underneath a master seed phrase, each one creating a completely different master private key or root private key and crypto account. So you can think of the accounts that you create with different passwords, not as children, but as siblings, if that makes sense. So let's go ahead and take a look at this in the seed phrase generator again. Here we are back at the recovery phrase converter and we've got our master seed and our passphrase. But what if we change the passphrase? Remember we went through this? Here's the master or root key that controls everything in this wallet. And if I change the passphrase, if I remove the word tweet, completely different root key. So theoretically, I could use this passphrase for one wallet and this passphrase for another wallet and this passphrase for another wallet. All of them have a different master key and different addresses associated with them. And it would be easy to restore a wallet using this seed phrase and this passphrase. Boy, that's really simple, huh? So what do we need to track with this particular system? System number three. Let's go ahead and look at our spreadsheet. Again, pretty simple. We simply have the wallet associated with the particular passphrase. If somebody got this a hold of this sheet, they do not have the root seed phrase, the master seed phrase. These passphrases really don't mean anything to them unless they had the passphrases with the seed phrase, the master seed phrase. And then you're in trouble. <laughs> so... It is important to keep these spreadsheets safe. The only drawback to this BIP39 system is that a lot of wallets don't yet incorporate the use of a passphrase. And frankly, I wouldn't use or recommend a wallet that doesn't have a passphrase. One that comes to mind is Exodus, which is a digital wallet and a Web3 wallet that is also available as an extension for your browser and a desktop wallet. And it's very popular and I have it. I just don't feel comfortable keeping a lot of my crypto on that wallet because it doesn't use a passphrase. The reason they don't use a passphrase is because that Exodus wallet in particular supports a tremendously wide number of blockchains and a lot of blockchains don't use passphrases. Also, some people might think that using the same seed phrase for every single wallet you own with different passphrases is kind of a security risk and that's arguable but i see the point in that as well okay so now that you've picked a system what is the next and final step it's to simply restore the wallets that you want to use with the bip32 extended private keys or the passphrases and master seed phrase that you developed in your system then you distribute your Bitcoin and crypto according to your risk tolerances. And that's it. That way, whatever system you chose, you've got a master seed phrase a master passphrase and everything else is just on a spreadsheet. That is pretty cool, huh? Organized, mm, beautiful. So what are the advantages of this five-step system? With these techniques, you can definitely simplify your totally disorganized seed phrase life down to a single master seed and passphrase. Imagine having only one seed phrase to secure your entire portfolio. 
the simplicity. If you're a Bitcoin only kind of person, all three of these systems might be something you should consider. If you're into multiple different cryptos, maybe the first system would be the most appropriate for you. And what are the disadvantages of using this five-step system? Well, some chains don't support a BIP32 extended private key from the second system for wallet restoration. For example, VeChain and the Cosmos blockchain use their own derivation scheme and address format. You can, however, use child seed phrases or the ones from system one to restore almost every wallet. Unfortunately, there are still some wallets out there that don't support passphrases. I have found that wallets that support a single blockchain tend to be a little more mature, well-developed, robust, and secure. Multi-chain wallets, on the other hand, tend to give up some security in order to host tens or even hundreds of different blockchains all in one place. What wallet you use is up to you whatever you're comfortable with. And so what are the risks of these three different management systems? Here's a little table I made demonstrating some of the risks of exposure of various parts of these particular systems. So we have the exposure down here column, and then we've got the BIP85 child seed system, number one, BIP44 child account system, or the BIP39 passphrase sibling system. And you can see, if your master seed is exposed and you're using the BIP85 child seeds, you're good because you have a passphrase. So again, if that seed phrase is exposed, boom, you're completely safe. Now, I would probably move my crypto off of those wallets into a whole nother system, a master seed, change your master seed, change your child seeds, start over essentially if your master seed phrase was exposed, but they're not going to get your crypto unless they get through your passphrase. Same thing here in BIP44, because we used a master seed and a master passphrase, we're good. Again, same thing here, master seed, master passphrase. So if the master seed is exposed, you are safe. If the master seed and master passphrase are exposed, it's not great because you've got your child seeds are now exposed, but they don't know what child seed number to use unless they have the number associated with a particular wallet. That's why I used random index numbers, and that's why I use random account numbers. Now, the neat thing with the BIP85 is you can use a passphrase for each sub child phrase. That's the magic. Because if they get your master seed and your master passphrase, they're going to have all of your child seed phrases in their possession, but they're not going to have access to the passphrases you've used. You're safe. And this cannot use passphrases. So Random account numbers can help, but you are seriously exposed if they get a hold of these two items. And for the BIP39 passphrases, if they get a hold of your master seed phrase and passphrase, the other siblings are not exposed, just that one account. Now, if one child or sibling entity is exposed, are the others infected? No, no, no. They're all separate. If one is exposed, Nobody can jump over to the next area and get into the other account. If your tracking spreadsheets that I showed you are exposed uh, by themselves with the index number, the wallet associated with it, and the passphrases, you're still good because you've got the master seed hidden away and you've got the passphrase as well. Same thing with the BIP44 wallet accounts, or excuse me, accounts. If they get your tracking spreadsheet, they've got account numbers and wallets. And then with the BIP39 passphrases, they're going to have your passphrase and the associated wallet, but they're not going to have the master seed phrase and you're still safe. As far as exposure of the master seed phrase and passphrase and spreadsheet, including all of the items on the spreadsheet, what are you doing in crypto? You need to get out of the crypto business, get back into fiat and put your money in a bank. Just forget it because I just don't know what you're doing if you're exposing your master seed, master passphrase and the spreadsheet that you've got all the information on. So uh, goodbye crypto in that case. You've got to keep them secure. Now, my recommendation. In my opinion, the BIP85 child seed phrase system offers the most flexibility and security. And because of that, that is what I use. Let me know in the comments what you think of these various seed phrase systems and what you're doing to help organize your seed phrase collection or what you're not doing. I hope this video helps you stay safe and secure. Thank you so much for watching. 
and I'll see you in the next video.